members for coming to preach the word to all of you. In the church here, we have a Young Preachers Academy program where we allow op the, the opportunity to come and preach for the very first time for some, but just to let you know, this is not the, their professional gig. So it's something that involves not just the preachers who are sharing the word with you, but also the encouragement from those who are listening, even those on Zoom. So we love to see your participation, whether it's in the group chats or another amen or say it, sister, or if, you know, if we were in my uh, growing up when I was a kid church, you'd have tambourines to say, well done. But all we want to know, we want you to know is that this is going to require all of us. So get your pens and your papers out. And I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And what a fitting theme is, you know, women do love their accessorized clothing. And I think there's opportunities for us to gain some spiritual content and what we should put on in our faith. Yeah. So to share more about these aspects, we have special women. Favor, who is our first speaker. Favor, we have Leslie, who will be speaking. season is over. <laughs> so we are in for a treat and I want you to give your devoted attention as well as your support to our dear sister Favor. Hello everyone. Hasn't it been an awesome service so Yeah. Amazing. Alrighty, let's jump into it. Well, the title of my lesson today is Clothed with Compassion. Um, we're going to be reading in Luke chapter 7, and I'm going to start in verse 11. Luke 7, verse 11, and I'll be reading the NLT version. It says, Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. The bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. And I really love this scripture as we see here. This is the very first miracle of resurrection in Jesus' ministry, right? And we see that usually whenever Jesus is doing a miracle, usually people would run up to him for help, right? But this woman was in so much grief, overwhelmed with so much sorrow, that Jesus was one that had to go to her to help her, right? And we see that when Jesus sees this woman, it says that he was overwhelmed with deep compassion with mm. her. And this word in Greek is splanch nizomai. Please, you know, like, I don't know if that's the right pronouncing, but we're going to try our best. <laughs> okay. um, but that means the deepest level of compassion anyone can have. Wow. There's actually no greater word for compassion than this in the Greek. It's mm -hmm. also the same word for intestine, which literally means that we're feeling this emotion mm -hmm. in our deepest oh, wow. part of ourselves. Come on, baby. And this is how deep Jesus really felt this woman's grief. He carried it with her himself. But he not only identified with her, he went out in a step of compassion to help her. Right? We see that he actually took action on this. And oftentimes when we think of compassion, we can mistake it for empathy. Which is simply feeling the feelings of others, right? So if you're in pain, I feel your pain as well. If you're sad, I pick up on your sadness. I'm being empathetic. Okay. Compassion, on the other hand, is pity coupled with an urgent desire to aid or spare. Meaning you have an action paired with that passion. Synonyms that we find with this word are sympathy, mercy, and even benevolence. So I'm hoping we're getting benevolence like our dear sister Emily was talking about. Come on, right? Emily. Um, 
when we have compassion, I give, when I have compassion, I give concern to the weight of your words. Mm. It means I value it. It means I care about it. It means I take action on what I see you feeling. Wow. Right? Come on, um, in Hebrew, this word is rakam, right? Which means to deeply love, to have mercy and forgiveness, right? And we see this all over the scriptures, this word compassion. It's used a whole, it's used over 144 times in the Bible, right? In Hosea, which is one of my favorite books in the Bible, um, we see this word compassion used a lot, right? We actually see the opposite of the word used for the very first time, which is lo hukama, which means without compassion and to not love. Wow. And here, this was the name that God gave Hosea to name his first daughter, wow. which means that God was saying that he was no longer going to be compassionate towards his people mm. because of the deep grief they've caused him by sinning. Wow. But don't worry, the story doesn't end there. In Hosea 2, verse 19, 11, verse 8, 13, verse 14, and 14, verse 3. God continues to promise compassion on his people. In the New Testament, we see compassion also shown in Jesus, right? He sees the hurting people and it says that he immediately has so much compassion for them. In scriptures like Matthew 13, 32 and Mark 6, 34, he shows compassion in healing those that are sick in feeding the hungry and even teaching them by feeding them spiritually with his words, wow. right? In Exodus 33, 19, we see that God says his compassion is dependent on who he wants to give it to. Mm -hmm. So he gets to choose who he has mercy and compassion on. Wow. In Lamentation 3, 22, it says his compassion never fails. Mm -hmm. And in James 5, 11, it says God is full of compassion. Mm -hmm. Ladies, this is what compassion really is. Mm -hmm. It's God's love for us that is so deep it's all of who he is that moves him to act for us Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. when i think of compassion in a in a when it relates to us i think of this beautiful story it's called the thief and compassion mm -hmm. um it's of this student who was caught stealing um in school and so some student brought it up to their principal and the principal didn't know nothing about it he wasn't really expelled the next time he was caught stealing you know the students expected some kind of you know, discipline to happen. But the principal, again, ignored the matter. And at this point, the students were really offended and they brought up a whole petition to this principal claiming that they would leave the school if he did nothing about it. And this was what the principal said. He said, you know what is right from wrong, but this poor brother does not. Who will teach him if I do not? And so he therefore showed compassion on him by allowing him to yeah. repent in a way, right? And change his ways by giving him another opportunity to remain in the school mm -hmm. and at this the students were really ashamed of their lack of compassion towards their fellow student mm -hmm. right and the thief himself um, cried seeing how much mercy he had been given mm -hmm. right and even though this is a beautiful story and it may not always end like this in real life mm -hmm. we see that this compassion is something that is not just always to someone that we think deserves it right mm -hmm. when we think of compassion we often think of stories like this with Jesus helping a poor widow or even the good Samaritan helping someone that's clearly in need but we can oftentimes fail to free, fail to remember that compassion is to those that need mercy yeah. meaning those that don't deserve wow. compassion are actually the ones that God expects as well for us to show compassion towards Come on. right it's just like the scripture says, God chooses whom he's going to show compassion to. And so how can we clothe ourselves with this deep love for others? Come on, the David. first practical is we've got to find the need. We've got to find who actually needs compassion, right? I want to encourage you guys to do a quiet time with a new sister every single week, at least once in that entire week. I really love doing this as a baby Christian. And even now, because I get to learn once so much about my sister and the campus and the singles and the married in a different lifestyle than I would imagine myself living, but also be able to ask her like, what is, what is a prayer request she has or a need she has for the week? What is a way I can show compassion? I can serve her, right? The second is to give benevolence. It's literally such a great act of, of compassion because we're planning to show care for others without even knowing the specific need that they may need, mm -hmm. right? So we're not able to be biased of who we're showing compassion right. to, right? Mm -hmm. Lastly is to share daily. 
sisters, we were once in this position where we begged God to show us compassion, yeah. right? So to be able to see the world as harass and help us as Jesus did is us being in his shoes and having that same heart of compassion. Yeah, For those visiting, I want to encourage you to study the Bible with someone that invited you out to learn this compassionate God that we serve, to learn the compassion that he wants to show you Come and on. to learn them the compassionate women that he wants to surround you with. Right. My sisters, I want to encourage you to put your passion to action, to put on compassion, and to be clothed with compassion. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, my beautiful Radiant ladies. Talia, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm super excited to just be here and have this opportunity. But ladies, tonight, the title of my charge is Kindness is Priceless. Mm. Now, I want you to think for a second. Think of something that is free in this world. Definitely not your Starbucks. <laughs> Definitely not the shoes on your feet. Definitely not your earrings. Definitely not the food in your fridge. But you know something that is priceless is being kind to someone. Okay. That's free. It costs nothing. But I want to dive into the scriptures and look at a time where that kindness for someone else was so priceless. So everybody turn with me to Mark chapter 2. Okay. And let's look at verses 1 through 7. So that's Mark chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 7. Give me an amen when you get there. Amen. 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 So it reads, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and lowered the man and lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And I absolutely love this story because I think about how much planning had to go into just, number one, putting a man who was dead weight. And y'all, I'm sure, I know I weigh at least a buck 75. <laughs> I know I'm at least. And I think about Talia, Brooklyn, Favor, Jesse May, me laying on a mat and them actually carrying my body that I can't move myself to go and meet Jesus. Wow. Yeah. That's priceless. Yeah. And they carried him. Okay, they get to this crowd and they're like, okay, okay, we can see Jesus, but we're going to have to try something else. Yeah. So they put their heads together. They went into planning. They went into actually putting in preparation to give no option to helping their friend. Yeah. The, right. the only option was to get him to Jesus. Yeah. That was the only option. So they were like, okay, there's a roof. We're strong. We've been working out. We're, we're good. Let's get him up there. So they climbed up and dig a hole. Mind you, this man is still laying on this mat. They dig a hole and lower him. Imagine if they just dug that hole and just dropped him in. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, he good. Let's get out of here. That's not, that's not kindness. No. And I think that sometimes we do that. We're like, okay, we did enough. We got you here. All right, Come see on. you later. But no, they went the extra mile. Yeah. They lowered him. They made sure he was good. They made sure that... He was taken care of. And Come then on. they made sure to see the miracle that Jesus yeah. had, that yeah. he did for this man. Right. He said, I see you. I see y'all's faith. Y'all yeah. work together. Y'all yeah. work together and did this. But you know, ladies, sadly, this hasn't always been my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up second oldest in my family where to helping my brothers with something absolutely not you help me <laughs> like what are we what are we doing i'm the only girl in the house duh like help me mm -hmm. and i would always forget that kindness is something that isn't natural yeah it's not something that's intentional right. and this really sprung back up when i had to i got to disciple my first one mm -hmm. Sadly, it wasn't that great. Um, she showed up for D time and you know, I, I cooked for her. I was like, yeah, 
kind, right? I was like, mm-hmm. here's a meal, washed her dish. And then in my shame, I was like, open your Bible. Okay. Let's get it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh boy, I could see the life just let out of her. Mm-hmm. And I think about this story. If those men would have given up on their friend, mm-hmm. if they would have just left him there and been like, we give up. Yeah. And that's how my tone was. Mm-hmm. Kindness is something that has to be practiced. It has to be intentional. Yeah. Come on, buddy. And some things that you know when you're being kind is you're unselfish. Yeah. You're considerate. Yeah. You want to be helpful. Mm-hmm. You give grace. You're patient. Yeah. And those were things that I didn't see even in my tone with discipling this sister. Mm-hmm. But lucky for me, I have women in my life that carry me. Come on. I have the favors. I have the Tollies, the Brooklyns, the Alyssa's that help me in those times that they, they pick me up and they say, Hey, I got you. They don't ask for anything in return. You know, the, these men didn't ask for anything in return after they lowered their friend down. Yeah. This was a priceless act to just consider their friend above all. And ladies, I want to ask. How have we been considering those in our lives? Mm-hmm. Come on. Whether it be your parents, whether it be your children, whether it be those you live with, yeah. mm-hmm. whether it be those you work with. Come on. Are we practically thinking about mm-hmm. how we're saying things? Yeah. How we're approaching a situation? Yes. And are we thinking about ourselves before those that mm-hmm. truly need that kindness? Mm-hmm. Everyone needs kindness. Yeah. Everyone needs that that soft approach to just be put before someone else. Yeah. I'm going to go to a scripture and show us what this practical is. Let's go to Philippians. Let's go to Philippians chapter two. We're going to look at verses three and four. And it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. Yeah. I want everybody to look to your right. Look to your left. <laughs> Do you value that sister above yourself? Y'all, this is your family. Yeah. <laughs> Do you value that person above yourself? So, I have two practicals for you. Whatever house you live in, whether it be a sister household, whether you live with your kids, whether you live with, you know, your parents, I want you to go and ask them. Have I been kind lately? How has my approach been? Have I been kind to you? And I want you, I want this to happen before tomorrow. Like, because I think we could sometimes like tiptoe. Like, they didn't tiptoe and be like, oh, we're maybe going to get you up to that room. Yeah. Hold on. Uh-oh. Let me wait till I'm ready. No, do it now. Let's go. Whatever they tell you. If they tell you, ah, sis, you've been a little harsh. Ah, you haven't been gentle. Mm-hmm. Study out that character trait. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Make it a strength. Make that character strength. Make that character trait a strength of yours yeah, so on. that then you can help somebody else grow in that character <coughs> flaw. Yeah. Right. That's something that I'm so grateful for that women actually took the time out to form these convictions in my heart. Thank you, T. To really help me grow in this area. So ladies, let's consider others throughout the week. Maybe washing dishes for your roommates. Yeah. And it might be the fifth time. Yeah. Maybe cleaning out the car of that sister that's always giving you rides. <laughs> or maybe just responding kindly when someone wrongs you. Yeah. So ladies, remember, kindness is priceless. <laughs> Ladies, I'm so grateful to be here tonight to be able to right. preach the word and just you know, oh, preach you know, my God through as well. Um, the title of my lesson is the heart of humility. Um, humility is actually a quality of being humble. It comes from the Latin word humilis, which means low or grounded. It is something to have low self regard and also a sense of unworthiness. See, pride on the other hand is it's too high of an opinion of one's own ability or worth a feeling or being better than others you see ladies knowing who we are is a key component to humility mm. it's the awareness of god and pride on the other hand is choosing to not look it's to it's choosing to look at yourself mm. but i want us to turn to a passage in luke 18 Come on. we're going to be reading verses 9 through 14 
Let me get an amen when y'all get there. Amen. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. And I'll start reading. Luke 18, 9 through 14 reads. Come on. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all, of I, all that I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I love this passage so much. Trust me, I'm convicted as well. But in this parable, we see that both of these men prayed. But both of these men, um, they went to God, but they didn't go to God the same way. Mm -hmm. You see, they went to God in prayer, but prayer is described in the Bible as seeking God's favor, like it says in Exodus 32, 11. Oh, it's geez. pouring out one's soul to the Lord, like it says in 1 Samuel 1, 15. Mm -hmm. It's crying out to heaven, like it says in 2 Chronicles 32, 20. Oh, it's drawing near to God, like it says in Psalm 73, 28. Oh, and it's kneeling before the Father, like in Ephesians 3, 14. Oh, but in order to even come to God, we have to have a joke, a sober judgment of self. Yeah. yeah. And you can see here as we look at the passage, we can see how the Pharisee, he was a teacher of the law. Um, he went to God, he knew who God was, but his heart was so far away. Like, I mean, we can look at how he prayed here. We can see that first he started off with comparing. He was comparing himself to other evil doers, so adulterers, and all these other sinners. But we gotta understand that comparison is not only the thief of joy but of humility as well. Because it usually results in two possible outcomes, either a sense of su superiority or inferiority, which is pride. Wow. He also bragged about fasting and how much he gave to God, AKA how spiritual he was. <laughs> he repeated I four times in this short prayer. He prayed with himself, not with God. And I think at times we could be praying to ourselves because we focus ourselves and not on God. <laughs> but we have to see the tax collector on the other hand he stood mm. at a distance he felt so unworthy to even go to the temple yeah. to draw near he didn't even want to look up meaning he felt ashamed to even be there yeah. you know he beat his breast this is actually an act of sorrow mm. he was feeling so terrible because he knew he was a sinner mm. he asked for mercy which is forgiveness to ask it's humility. Yeah. It takes a lot to ask for help. Come on. And the main thing that stuck out to me is he knew who he was. Come on. He said if he pretty much caught himself a sinner, but understanding that this this phrase that he says is, if there was ever a sinner, it's me. Mm -hmm. So ladies, I, I reflect on this because this was this is I, I used to be, you know, a little Pharisee when I was in my prayers. Um, I would always pray like, God, I want to be used by you. Mm. God, I'm remaining in the vine. Why have I not been fruitful? God, I want to raise up. Come God, on. I want to lead all the studies. Oh, God, I want this role. God, everybody around me is David. Where is my Boaz? Oh, yeah. God, you said you give the desires of my heart. And I sounded just like this Pharisee because it was all about me. Yeah. Because this, God had to humble me. You know, he kept me in a role where I had no, no other thing to do but serve. Yeah. Which is what a humble heart does, yeah, is to on. serve. But we have to understand here, in order to even grow, ladies, we got to have a heart of humility and understanding that we got to look at this, how this tax collector prayed. You know, he, he understood who he was. Right. I think that's the main thing that should keep us humble is who we are in God. It's understanding that who we were before, you know, we came into the kingdom. Who we were when we were studying the Bible. Yeah. I was such a wicked woman. You know, I still struggle, but it's yeah. understanding that in order for me to go to God, I have a sense of humility. Yeah. I got to be able to ask for help. Yeah. Like, God, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Like, I want to be used by you, but 
what is it that you want from me? If you want me in this role, I'm going to serve and I'm going to do the best I can. If you want me to share my faith, I'll share my faith. I'm going to do whatever it takes to please you, God. Yeah. But it's understanding that in order to do this, like, we got to understand humility is really important. And I have a couple examples of how we can benefit from humility. Come on. Yes. One, it, our, it deepens our relationship with others. Yeah. Two, we feel less inclined to defend ourselves. Yeah. Three, we react less and love more. Four, we find reward in action, not in accolades or titles. Five, we learn to love unconditionally. And six, we are more thoughtful in decision making. Mm. Come on. But ladies, when it take, in order to for us to even go after these things, we have to remember who we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't compare each other, our, yeah. each other's walk with one another, understanding that it's between you and God and God alone. Oh. The sisters around you are here to help you. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to feel attacked or right. feel like, oh, she has this, she has that. But what about you? Mm-hmm. Our reward is God at the end of the day. Yeah. It's not about the, the Bible talk, you know, role leading and all these mm-hmm. things. We are called to be a servant, yeah. which is to be humble, ladies. Come so on. I have a couple practicals. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. My first practical is I want you to take some time in your prayer uh, tomorrow morning and reflect on this past year or a couple of months and write down the area you haven't seen growth in. Mm. Understanding where there's no growth, there's that's where pride lies. Ooh. So I want you to write this down. It could be you haven't really seen growth in your prayer life. You haven't really seen growth in serving. You haven't really seen growth in your discipline. You haven't really seen growth in your attitude. Mm-hmm. But understanding that we can take this to God. He can, we can take this to God and understanding that he wants to change us so he can use us. Come on, come on. And I have another practical. Come on, yeah. share it. Okay. I want us to pray through your conversion. Mm-hmm. Remembering all that God has yeah. brought you through and all that he's done for you. Because mm-hmm. I think it's super important to understand that it's not about self anymore. Absolutely. You know, we come in the kingdom where we came because one, we love God, yeah. but two is understand that we came here to save souls. Right. We were yeah. simply saved to save others. Mm-hmm. Ladies, I want to ask you tonight, is this something that you need to grow in? Yeah. Like, do you feel like you could be prideful when you're dis- when you're discipled in a certain area? Mm-hmm. Do you kind of feel like you got to defend yourself? Or do you feel like, you know what, this woman in front of me is helping me grow and to be righteous mm-hmm. before God? Mm-hmm. Ladies, I think this is really important. And I, I want us all to grow in this because it's something that I struggle with. I still struggle with this today. Mm-hmm. You know, it's understanding that humility isn't something that just comes naturally you know i think of eve the reason why she ate the fruit is because she didn't like her role she wanted to know more she wanted to be more like god understanding that she was called to support adam to be his helper ladies are we helping are we serving are we doing what god is calling us to do are we loving the roles that we're in that's really important ladies but with this, I really want us to go after this with all of our hearts. And I think that if we go after these practicals, we are able to have the heart of humility. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, we've heard some really great uh, sermon that's today, haven't we? Yeah. 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 I want to thank you, Talia, just so much for this opportunity. Mine too. Um, the title of my lesson is Draw Nearer to a Gentle Whisper. Wow. Wow. Let's go to yeah. 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. All right. Come on, Georgia. Come on, Georgia. And it says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains apart, tore them apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Yeah. This scripture is really amazing, and it's super powerful. And it takes place at a time where almost all of God's prophets were being killed, yeah. were being slaughtered and hunted down and murdered. And Elijah 
in a show of God's power, actually was able and led the way in killing about 450 fake prophets. Yeah, wow. He said, wow. this is in God's name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was also scared because he was still alone. Mm -hmm. And when the threats came, they still came. He was scared and he ran away. He hid in a cave. Yeah. And it was because of Elijah's fear and his timidity that he thought maybe God was going to rain down fire and rebuke him, you know, and, and use all of these powerful elements. That have been, that's what he was looking for. That's what he was expecting. Is God to just rain down on him. But that's not what God did. Is that God chose to dispel Elijah's fear and encourage him and show concern for him. He asked him, what are you doing here? Like, why are you hiding? Yeah. Talk yeah. to me. I want to know. Yeah, come on. come on. This is a really, really gentle response from God. Yeah. yeah. And I looked up the word gentle, and especially I looked it up in the Bible. Um, and it says, um, a sensitivity of disposition and kindness of behavior, come founded on. on strength and promoted by love. Wow. Mm -hmm. This scripture in this story, it reminds me of a time in my life and in my relationship with my little brother where I wasn't brave. Mm. Or I wasn't gentle. In mm. fact, it was the opposite of gentle. Yeah. Um, because I was, you know, God-given authority, I was the older sister. <laughs> on, I was like the number one babysitter. Um, really, at it. times, especially when my parents were home, it was my way or the highway. Mm. Mm. Um, and in this relationship, I showed, like, the complete mm. opposite of gentleness. Yeah. And I looked those words up, and it actually means a harshness, mm. merciless, and unfriendly. Mm. I remember that I would yell at him when he wasn't doing his chores. And then his, my parents would get home and they would yell at him even more. I would kick him out of my room, and especially when my friends were over, or keep him there, you know, just to make fun of him. Mm. Um, even especially teaching him math, because he's about seven years younger than me. So he would come home with homework and he would be like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I would just be like, why not? Like, what are you doing? Like, this is easy. It's seven <laughs> times five. Like, I can do that. Why, why can't you do this? Yeah. I was harsh in my words and I wasn't showing gentleness. I wasn't showing kindness. Mm -hmm. In that moment, in, in multiple moments, I never stopped to realize how my actions affected I, I made up a lot of excuses, like, he'll get over it, you know, he's fine, he's a man, like, he, he has to be a man out in the world, so yeah. I thought that it was my job to teach him that, you know, I thought yeah. that it was my job to prepare him for the world by, by showing the harshness to him. Wow, yeah. come on. And as a result, I got comfortable, you know, I got comfortable, um, come on, come on. I got comfortable in this relationship yeah. and it fostered um, a lot of negativity. Um, it just, it showed um, that I, I didn't care for him. Yeah. And um, I showed a lot of pride on my mm. heart. Um, and it resulted in a, a friendship that was lost, yeah. you know, a relationship that was lost. Um, and when situations came in his life and he grew up and he struggled, I was now not a place that he could come to. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't able to rely, he wasn't able to rely on me for support. Mm -hmm. um, I was insensitive and I showed myself to be someone that he should expect yeah. harshness from now. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for the kingdom and for God because mm -hmm. by becoming a disciple, I'm learning how to foster God's gentleness mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and in that relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to be able to lead and teach with love mm -hmm. and to encourage daily, to yeah. encourage my sisters, to encourage my family, to yeah. be able to um, set aside what I think or even how I feel and be gentle and respond gently, gently, no matter what comes my way. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, really just be able to give the benefit of the doubt to people yeah. that are around me. And now, as my relationship with my brother even grows, we've grown stronger and we've grown closer. Come on. Mm -hmm. and Come on. And uh, ladies, there are a lot of times in our lives where we can expect from our mighty God the wind, mm -hmm. the fire, mm -hmm. the earthquakes. We can expect His all powerful wrath to just yeah. rain on us mm -hmm. all the time, constantly. Mm -hmm. And we can even respond to each other that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not who God is. Mm -hmm. As much as He is as much powerful as He is loving and gentle, He yeah. is both. Come and on, in this Georgia. scripture, God chose to reassure and comfort Elijah. He whispered with sincerity and he called Elijah out of the cave, out of hiding, to proudly prophesy again. Come on. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they turned into God. How can you give me this and I use it to serve you? But if we read the rest of the story, it actually became a good scenario where God did give Hannah a son, mm-hmm. and that son happened to be Samuel. Yeah. And if you read any of Samuel, there's actually two books in the Bible. Samuel became an incredible prophet. Yeah. Of God. Yeah. He demonstrated so much servitude. Yeah. But God made her wait. God made Hannah be really, really patient. Mm-hmm. But he gave her the best gift she could ever imagine. Yeah. After she was patient. Yeah. <laughs> and this makes me think of the season we're actually in right now, the holiday season the gift of giving yes um we were receiving all of these gifts we're supposed to be giving them but a lot of times we're receiving a lot of them as well mm-hmm. um i know i already sent my christmas to my mom i'd like some new air force <laughs> mine are a little bit hey. <laughs> <laughs> For everything that I want, that I desire, and I'm expecting her. <laughs> um, but in this season of, of giving, uh, we think about like what the best gifts would be. I know for me, like I would so much more appreciate a gift from someone that is really special, where they took the time to think about it. Mm-hmm. Like if you've ever received a gift from like a, one of your close friends, they're probably some of the best gifts because they know you. Yeah. They know the things that you like. They won't just give you the same, you know, Chick Fil A gift card every single yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, I wish you some too. They'll actually give you something that you enjoy, that's yeah. worthwhile for you. Yeah. And we see in this process that God was actually gifting Hannah her son, but in a specific way because he knew who she was. Mm-hmm. So if we take this scenario and see that this gift that Hannah was just given this gift because she just wanted a child because Panina had one too, mm-hmm. it would have completely taken the godliness out of it. Yeah. If yeah. Hannah had a child just like everyone else, she would have never had Samuel, the great prophet that we get to study mm-hmm. out to mm-hmm. yeah. be inspired to be like. Come on. If God just cheaply gave her this gift, there wouldn't have been a significance to anyone. Mm-hmm. But her prayers became, God, how can I receive this so that I can serve you. Yeah. Um, and what I appreciate about this is it shows us that nothing is wrong with having desires in our heart. Yeah. God even gives us desires in our heart. Right. But in us desiring something, we have to wait for it. Mm. Wait for God's time. Amen. So I want us to consider um, our own desires. Mm. How we may pray to God and ask God for all these things and just be expecting God to give it to us like an entitlement. Like, God... I need you to give me uh, some money. I need you to help me pay for this. Like in our in our desire for things, we can just be so entitled and selfish. Like I deserve this. Like Christmas. Like I deserve a new pair of shoes. But I didn't do anything to deserve. Like there's nothing I did that actually meant I earned it. But instead of having this entitlement or selfish, ambitious heart of of wanting something, sisters, I want to challenge us to have this this heart that Hannah did to desire something from God. But because it's in the line with God's will, mm-hmm. because it can be used for God. Mm-hmm. Um, so my my challenge to you or my practical to you is actually to challenge your desires oh, and to do so. Write all of your desires on a piece of paper and then ask yourself, are these ambitions for yourself or for God? If you want to be great, for who? Ooh, if you want to be a leader, for who? Come on. If you want a car, for who? Oh, if you want to date, oh, for who? Oh, if you want a new job, oh, for who? Oh, uh, if you want to make more money, for who? Oh, who? God realigned Hannah's <laughs> motives so that she, her desires could be for him. Yeah. And even though this process was packaged in patience, it was packaged in her waiting, it was packaged in her suffering, God still desired her to go through this so she could realign her desires for him. Come on, Brookie. And my second practical for you today is fix your attitude. (laughs) Initially, we see Hannah was really upset and broken that she didn't receive this gift from God. And everyone saw it. For us, when we're waiting for something from God, we can get upset, like, man, I really just don't know why God has no waiting for this. Like, I'm trying to be better. Why? I'm trying to, I'm trying to give more money to church. Why won't you give me some, God? Or I'm trying to, I'm trying to drive somebody over here and there. Why won't you give me a car? There's many, there's many things we can um, desire, but when we don't get them, what does our attitude really look like? Yeah. Are we just 
you know, I deserve this because I want it. Are we complaining like, man, God just has me waiting? Because when we do, other people can see it. That may even translate to you not being patient with your sister. That may even translate to you not being patient just with the people you're around because you're annoyed at God for having you wait for him. Because we want our will and our desires. So I want to challenge you to fix your attitude, fix the way you're talking. Yeah. Because you can see it in your mood. If you're happy, if you're content with what God has given you, that's what that's you're going to radiate. Yeah. yeah. One thing I love is uh, hearing Leslie always talk about her family and how she's just so excited for them to go after God. I'm so excited for them to become disciples. Like, she always says it. Like, I'm just waiting for them. And that literally just inspires me to be so much more excited about challenging situations in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Things that I'm hoping to see God do. But it all comes from our attitude, from how we talk, how we talk to one another. But patience is such an important quality towards God, but also towards one another. Yeah. Sisters. I want to see this unified, but the only way to do that is through being patient with one another. Yeah. But it first starts with being patient with God. We can't forget that we're in a generation of wanting fast results and yeah. expecting yeah. things our way. Mm -hmm. But we have to fight to acknowledge where we first lack the patience mm -hmm. so we can help one another out mm -hmm. so that we can be surrendered to God's will and be willing to wait. So let's not quench this gift from God. It may be wrapped in delay. It may be wrapped in waiting. It may be wrapped in suffering. Yeah. But ultimately, the gift is in the patience. Yeah. So let's fight to accept this gift of patience from God. Thank you. Thank you. verse 13, the theme scripture for tonight. I'm going to be reading the ERV translation. Okay. And it says, don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you, forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. I'm going to keep it very short and sweet to the point for the sake of time. So, um, what's so awesome about this scripture? It just gets straight to the point about what forgiveness really looks like. And I love how it starts off with an emotion. Come on. Anger, right? Mm -hmm. And when we get angry, the Bible says it's not sin to feel anger, but it's more so what we do with the anger. Yeah. And in this scripture, God is telling us through Paul that we got to be willing to forgive each other, uh, even if we feel that someone wronged us. Because sometimes we can feel like a, a situation happened one way, but in all reality, it didn't. Right. And that's just our perspective, yeah. right? Uh -huh. But we got to be willing uh, to forgive. And, and I'm going to go more into detail on why we should forgive. But the, the core word in the Greek of forgiveness is karitsomai. Oh, and it means to give graciously or do something pleasant for someone. Wow. So forgiveness is actually a form of grace. Wow. They share the same root word, karis. And so it's the way we pardon someone for their sin against us. So sometimes we want to wait for someone to earn our forgiveness. Well, I'm going to wait until that sister apologizes to me for what she did. Or we start getting a little weird like, hey, sis. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's not really how forgiveness is supposed to happen. Yeah. Like we shouldn't expect anyone to earn forgiveness because God didn't expect that from us. Yeah. God Come gave on. us forgiveness That's without it. limit. Yeah. He gave That's it to us graciously. Yeah. So, okay, so forgiveness is actually a gift that we give ourselves. Sometimes we can yeah. think it's a burden yeah. that we can pile up in our hearts and hurt the other person. How does that work? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, how do we actually keep forgiveness and the person that probably doesn't even know that they hurt us and we just want to keep having this little thing with ourselves like wait like are you trying to hurt them or yourself or it's just causing more stress okay why should we forgive well the scripture in the beginning part of colossians in that chapter it says god chose us god loves us 
And as being in our, our life now as disciples, he's chosen us for a purpose to live like this. Like, so we get to live in love, compassion, patience, kindness, mm-hmm. and forgiveness. Like, mm-hmm. this should be a complete night and day difference from the way that the world teaches. Because yeah. the world will teach, oh, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But that's not really forgiveness. Yeah. That's like, you, you shouldn't just forgive and forget. You actually got to go ahead and do even more than you would do in the relationship before. So, what's another reason why we should forgive? We should forgive because God forgave us in the waters of baptism. Yeah. Wasn't that an amazing feeling yeah. when you studied the Bible, confessed your sin, yeah. and repented for everything that you did before, yeah. and now lived as a saved disciple? You came out of the waters just excited, yeah. ready to hit the ground running, wanting to tell everybody about the thing that changed your life, that God gave you grace. Yeah. And I think for myself, You know, when I think of grace, it's all about how we were raised. Mm -hmm. For me, I never really grew up having a, a, like a understanding of what grace really looked like. Cause I grew up in a house that was very like disciplinary. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, okay, well, when I mess up, I gotta be down on myself. Mm-hmm. When I mess up, like I can't let myself forget. Oh, like you messed up. Like this is just big. Like you can't come back from this. Come you know. On. And in the no, same really. way, it can be really hard for me to give grace on other people. Yeah. yeah. And so, like um, recently, for me, like uh, realize like it's really easy for me to be disrespected or insulted by someone that I barely know. But when it's someone I really care about, come I can on. really like feel it intensely and, yeah. and like struggle. Yeah. So um, the weeks leading up to our wedding, uh, there was someone really important to me who on, um, on, said that they were going to be at our wedding and yeah. um, she wasn't there. Um, and when we were talking about it, I remember her response being like very nonchalant about it. And so for me, it made me feel like, okay, well, I'm not going to act like I care or I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to put myself out there. And I really didn't fight for it, Mm -hmm. you know, and turned out that uh, she didn't come out, you know, because someone in her life influenced her not to come. And that really hurt me. Um, And it wasn't until recently talking to Matt at home that I, uh, I was like just venting and sharing about like the situation and kind of how I was feeling about it after praying. And he was like, yeah, babe, I think you're really bitter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I am? (laughs) You know, like I I didn't think that like my emotions clouded everything. Yeah, I didn't really think that I was harboring this in my heart, Mm -hmm. but I could tell because I didn't want to pray about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to pray about her. I didn't want to pray about the situation. I just avoided it. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for my husband. Let's go. Back to the scripture. And for Talia reinforcing that. You gotta, you gotta change in this area. And and in my mind, I'm like, hold up. Did you hear what you did? Did you hear yeah. what happened? Yeah. And I just wanted to justify it. Yeah. But I had to go to God in prayer. And to be honest, like even for me getting emotional, you can see that it's not a one and done thing. Yeah. Like I'm still working through it to forgive each and every single day because we gotta forgive everyone every day for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I gotta love her enough to not focus on me being right, but focusing on the Bible being right to give her the opportunity to to really see God's grace in my life and so I'm fighting to reconcile that relationship so I have two practicals for you sisters before I get out of here so practical number one you gotta stay and pray in Luke 23 Jesus didn't squirm off of the cross in the most challenging painful like emotional time of his life while people were insulting him Splitting up his clothes. Imagine just being stripped naked and completely vulnerable. Jesus didn't run from that. Yeah. He decided to not allow what was going on to make him uh, to make him upset or bitter. But he prayed for them. He said, "Father, forgive them," because he knew that they needed grace. And so we've got to allow prayer to guard our hearts and to not squirm off of the crosses in our life. We've got to allow prayer to transform us. And even if that means wrestling and praying many, many times about the situation or about the person, about praying, what about praying with them? You know, to really like reconcile the relationship. And practical number two, Matthew 18. 
sometimes we want to go to other people and you know act like we're getting advice well you really don't need to get advice to reconcile with someone yeah. 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 No, says, you on. gotta go to that person hey. first hey. so go to them reconcile <laughs> and if you want them over that's awesome if you haven't then bring somebody who's you know more spiritual into the situation yeah but try to reconcile first you know uh quickly yeah. so nice. you know if we go after these biblical principles in our relationships and applying them ladies we're gonna be able to show the world the amazing grace of god and to god be all the glory